Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you all the tools that I use to build all these four models. If you are a Gunfly enthusiast, you should know the series, but still for the reference I will tell you. These two are the entry grade, which were released last year, 2020. They are cost around 375 rupees each. And I think before you buy any other tools, you should buy one entry grade. This is going to save you a lot of time and it will improve your techniques. You can build this with your own hands. You don't need other, any other tools. But I did use tools. This one is a high grade HG Barbados, one by 144 scale. And this is a SD, super deformed, build burning Gundam from the Build Fighter series. They are all on YouTube. You can search and just watch the series. They are very nice. I've been a Gundam fan from around 2000. The first scene I watched was the Zeta versus Psycho, uh, the Mark II Gundam versus Psycho Gundam in Hong Kong. If any of you are the same fan of the series and you have watched them, then it is very easy for you to know. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a nipper also known as side cutter or a gate cutter. This one, the Bandai Spirits NG grade nipper in blue color cost me around 400 rupees. These are the cheapest nippers that you can buy out there. These are perfectly for your gunpla. You, as you can see, they are perfectly sharpened. You can use these to, to properly cut your parts from the runners. This one I bought from a local store. It cost me around 100 rupees. This is nice for cutting runners, but I think if you want a very nice finishing, you should use this one. So get yourself a proper nipper if you are buying a gunpla model for the first time. Always remember, you cannot build a high grade without these. As for more information on the nipper, the God Hand PN120 are the best in the industry. After that, I think it's the Tamiya. We don't have the US brands anywhere near Japan, so I can't say. The God Hands cost around 4,000 4, rupees, sorry. And you do not want to buy them with the shipping and the customs. So I guess this is your best hope. There's also advanced nipper if you want to buy it from Bandai too. It will very it will be very good if you put it. So after you have cut it down the parts, you want them to clean up from the nuts. There are many YouTube videos you can search online. They will have so many techniques, but you see, this is the one I use. I in this box I have sandpapers from ancient paints, 20 rupees each sheet from around 800 grit then 1000, then 1500, and lastly 2000 grid sandpapers. And I use them by pasting them on the hard surface. This was actually a ruler from Retraj. It was, well, all the measurements were wiped off from it. It was a very old ruler, so I cut it and used a double tape to stick the sandpaper on it. And that's how I made all these. They are very nice to use. You can just simply sand away the extra parts that you don't need. You can clean out your cut marks or any scratches that you have on your models. Nobody loves scratches, I know. And after scratching them up, sorry, after sanding them up, you can also use 2000 like this one I have. Soak it in the water and lastly polish as much as you want. Well, do not polish them so much that your part goes away. And lastly, I use a microfiber cloth like this one used to clean glasses to wipe all the extra sanding. You can also use these. These are the nail buffers. They cost around 100. Well, it costed me around 90 from a local store, but I wouldn't recommend these. Because up to their step three, 
they are all, I think they are all the same grids around 320, which will wipe off everything. They will destroy your models. You do not want to use these. I only use these for step four, the condition, then smooth. Then lastly, nail buffer and polish. Wait a minute, let me. Hmm. I use only these two steps the most time, but they were failures because even after shining it so much, scratches were still there. The scratches were similar to what you get on your phone's screen guard after a long time of usage. All right, you have sanded your parts, you have cleaned them up. Now you have assembled. But here's the thing, sometimes your parts are not that easy to clean them up, not easy to clean. They will not have this much smooth finish. Oh, sorry about that. As you can see, I had to clean them all so much to get a perfect shine. Well, not perfect, but as close to as I will ever get. All right. Also, I, as you can see on my barbatos, I have pan lined most of the surfaces. Why you pan line these is because, well, you want to have a depth of a real good model. You don't want them to leave flat out. Some people do that. I really hate that part in their first snap builds. So I'm going to tell you the best way you can easily pan line these black lines all over your gun block. The best thing is to do is to use the box art. As you can see, I pan lined it as much as I could. The dark space between the eyes, if you can see. Wait a minute, let me just. Yes. As you can see properly, I have pan lined the face. You can see that black face mask, the details on the bent side, they were very flat. The arms, the legs, these parts, even the hand, even the small hands. Oh, I used a black pan liner to properly pan line these, even the legs. I used pencil in this. I will show you all my supplies right now. While pan lining, always refer to the box art. You don't want to create any mishaps. All right. This is all the stuff that I use to pan line here. Yes, I use stick markers. Why? Because sometimes when you clean the, uh, clean the parts up, there are some white marking and scratches. You can use these. I use you know the red parts. Why uh, just stroke one, then let the paint dry. Then after that, use a wiping cloth to wipe that part. The the white part will, well, I have to say, disappear as much as it can, and it will give you smooth, equal coloring all across the parts. I use this gray on the gray parts as you can see. Then for pan lining, the most basic supply that you can get on Amazon India right now, under 100 or even your, at your local store is a Sakura Micron pen. I use a 005. The more, how do you say, uh, thin pens you use, the more better quality of pan lining you will get. Well, I bought these whole set because I wanted the brush pen. You can also use any brush pen for the face. How do you do the face is before putting the part on, you take your brush pen, you put some paint in those mask lines and then wipe it off using a cloth. You can do this with a sketch pen, although I would uh, suggest a brush pen would be much nicer. 
Then for the Barbie tools, I use the, as I said, I use the Micron Z05. Somewhere around my Z05 was, well, useless. It emptied and dried out. So then I used a 0.05 mm Bresto fine liner pen. You can use any fine liner. I even use the pencils on some parts. Let me tell you this right now. The white, uh, I made a mistake of using the black lines while these are looking good. People in the official Gundam community always like grey lines on the whites and blacks for every other part. And I use a Sakura Jelly Roll Pen to fill out the these two sticker parts. If you are getting an IBO kit, Iron Blooded Awesome kit, you can you must have this pen. Okay, they are uh, they are available in every color. You can replace stickers with these. You just have to fill up the parts using these pens easily. They are like four type markers, and then wipe them off using a cloth or a rubber. You don't actually have to be so clean in pan lines. You can easily just remove extra ink or extra parts with the rubber or a cloth. You can keep re redoing them again and again. Time will save so much time. Oh man, I wasted so much time. All right. After your pan line, you did everything else you can. Next is, well, I guess top coat. I used a Samurai 120 flat clear top coat on this. Barber toes. I haven't used these on, I haven't used anything on these. I used one on this, but as you can see, it dispersed the light, making it look like an actual model. I also use some Sharpie gold pens. Let me show you. Here they are, the Sharpie pens. These are the Sharpie permanent markers, the metallic series. It's a, This one is a bronze, but there's also gold and silver that you can use to detail around parts like I did. Well, I use a gold, gold spray on this crown and every other vent. But for the ease in a parts, they were gray all together. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yes. But for this, these are the pipes all around the part, even the back. I use these pens to color them and fill up the details. As, as much as details you can put in these, they all will be fine and you will have a very good collection, I must add. As, uh, this was the sword mace weapon that came with it. This is an actual accessory. As you can see, well, it wasn't so much highly accurate, but I used this silver pen from the Sharpie marker to give it a lid type texture on the sides. And for filling these red parts, I used the jelly roll pen. But before doing all of this, I must ask you to use a plastic spoon. As you can see, I've used this for painting before using these for painting, I used to practice sanding on these. As much as you practice and trying to clean up your work, it will look good. And also, if you're going to paint Gunpla, I have to say that please don't. The Any acrylic paints that you use will give you this bad result. There's a, another video of me sharing my experience and you will have to watch it. Unless you have proper plastic model colors and or an airbrush, especially an airbrush, you cannot paint this using the whatsoever, whatever available on the local market. So I hope you guys can put more effort in your gun plus and make gun, Indian Gundam community much better so that we may actually have a shop. And please do share your works on Instagram. Even if you have already shared, there's not a limit to how much you can improve over the kits you have built. I mean, if you have built something that's just standing there, why not make a stand out of it? I used a runner part on this and a cap 
I created some holes and now it's a perfect stand for my SD. It can also be used for the others. I also tried to make a custom stand using a construction kit I had when I was a kid. Remember guys, you bought the kit once but that doesn't mean you have to end it there. You can always keep going on. You can keep improving, make good videos, make good content for the Gundam community and share Okay, that's it for all. I think I covered up all the necessary tools. Please share and subscribe, I guess. Try to find as much as tools you can. And if anybody is currently making plastic models, whatever tools you have, please share online, at least on Reddit, so I can find uh, some good tools. By the way, let me tell you this, after 2000 creative sandpaper, you cannot find them on Amazon. They are not there. The best you can do is 2000. So practice your sanding.